Learning guitar doesn't have to be hard. Some of the chords, techniques and approaches you can take that will eventually make you a great guitarist are easy to get started with and they will set you up for a successful and creative journey with this instrument. In this video, I'm assuming you have a bit of guitar knowledge already, but don't worry if not because the things I'm going to cover are accessible and beginner friendly. Let's start by looking at chords. Man, some of these can be a daunting prospect, hey? They can look pretty overwhelming. But if you start with something like an E minor, it's just two fingers across two strings. We're going to use our first and our second finger on the second fret of the A string and the second fret of the D string. Beautiful, moody sound. Now when we're playing our chords, we want to make sure we've got a nice curve in our knuckles because we, otherwise we might start interfering with the open strings underneath. We don't want that. That second finger, if that was to dip down, suddenly that G that we wanted open is going to be muted and taken away. We want that curve so that we can allow everything else to come through. Wrist hanging quite low in this situation, so that allows our fingers to stretch out. That's going to be particularly paramount as you go on with your guitar playing and start to play more complex chords. We want to build that ability to stretch our fingers nice and early on. So E minor looks pretty straightforward, eh? If I was to show you something like a C major, and that looks like a different proposition altogether. Three fingers stretched across three strings. Doesn't feel very and doesn't look very beginner friendly. But let's take that with a bit of a different approach. Let's form that E minor again. If we want to move to that C major, suddenly that formation, that transition, I don't think that looks as scary. One of the big key factors here, a second finger, it's already in position. It shares the same note and the same fret. Here, we are playing an E note in our E minor. That seems pretty obvious, we've got an E. To form the chord C major, we need the notes C, E, and G. So our E is already there. From E minor, our third finger can hover over that third fret of the A string and comes down. Our first finger's just got to move to that first fret of the B string. Second finger's already where we need it to be. E minor to C major. That finger is called an anchor. The finger that links between the two chords that stays down, it's an anchor. Let's look at something like A minor. It doesn't look as threatening, I don't think, but still maybe a bit complicated, a bit bunched. It can look a little bit tricky, but let's move from that E minor again down to A minor. A thumb comes over the top to mute that low E string, just cleans up the chord. That E could be there, just makes it a bit muddier sounding. So our thumb comes over the top. Our second finger didn't have to leave the fretboard. E minor down to A minor. Now, coming over to that C major, it's even easier. One finger needs to move over to form that C major chord. A minor, our second, and our first finger stay where they are. It's only our third finger that needs to link to that C major chord. Let's hear those chords together. Just a single strum. It's a lovely little progression. Maybe just add your own strumming pattern. You are writing your own music, as simple as that. Let's look at another one that's often viewed as being quite tricky, a G major. Four fingers down, looks quite awkward, eh? Let's use that E minor trick again to see whether we can make this process a little bit easier. E minor, first and second finger. We can now slide across very slightly. Our first finger is our anchor. It stays on that fret. It just tucks up a little bit closer to that second fret. One finger's done. One finger's already down where we need to be. We've still got the rest of that G major to form, to be fair, okay? Still quite a tricky one, but we've made the process a little bit easier, E minor to G. We could remove our third and fourth fingers. That's not a bad practice to have early on. You're not gonna form any bad habits here as long as you take it step by step. If you think, okay, I wanna build this one bit at a time, I'm gonna move my second finger across. We're now technically playing a G6 here, rather than a G major. That's all right, if you can't get that third and fourth finger down straight away, it's okay, just get that bit. Linked and sounding smooth, all the notes coming through nice and clear. Then apply that third finger to the third fret of the B. As you've got that transition building and developing, introduce the little finger. Next time you see those tricky chords, you can build towards them. You don't need to get there straight away. Perseverance, be patient, but little and often practice is brilliant. Sometimes the smallest steps forward can cause the biggest breakthroughs. Quick example of a song, one of the first things I ever learned, Nirvana's About A Girl, great way to practice that E minor to G progression. And 
Another example would be the jams, that's entertainment. A little bit of a trickier strumming pattern, but we reverse that pattern from a G major to an E minor. We're gonna stick a capo on for this one. That's gonna go on to your third fret. Just make sure that line's nice and close up to the fret. Covering all six strings, we start with our G major. example of how you can practice that chord progression but the other way around and while we're on the note of capos what a great way to be able to shift those chords around the guitar you might have learned something in the open position we're playing open chords beautiful sound lovely you find out something's in a different key or you see when you're on your ultimate guitar tab search that you need to have the c major g major chord played with a capo on the full fret you know those shapes already you've shifted everything into a different key. That capo can just be moved up and down the fretboard and you can play exactly the same shapes you played without the capo, as long as you keep shifting them up in line with wherever this capo goes. So keep an eye out for that when you see Tab referring to open chords on different positions in the neck or playing a song in a different key. Scales, now people shudder sometimes when they hear that word and see it as this really complex, complicated thing. But again, it doesn't need to be. A really nice shape to learn. Third fret of the A string, second finger. We're gonna play the C major scale. Stretch your little finger across to the fifth fret. First finger is waiting to come onto the second fret of the D string. Great for our stretching abilities here. Then third fret of the D, fifth fret of the D, second fret of the G, fourth fret of the G, fifth fret of the G is our C note, brings us back to C. We've traveled one octave. Alternate your picking pattern, down, up on the strings that you're playing. We've traveled from C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. We're back at C. Now, you've just learned the C major scale. You've learned the major scale for every note that's available because it's chromatic. It has chromatic abilities. You can shift that shape up and down one fret at a time. If we started on the third fret and kept those same intervals, we've played a C major scale, shift everything along one, C sharp major, go again. D, D sharp, E and so on until you get back to C again. A great thing to learn would be your chromatic scale. It's popping up now. Memorize those notes, see where the sharps and flats appear. There's only B to C and E to F that don't have sharps or flats. And then you can just shift that shape up and down. So if someone says, I'm playing around D major, you can go A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, fifth fret as a D note, play those intervals got the D major scale. It's a great way to learn your fretboard. You'll start to make reference points for where those notes appear and you'll learn your fretboard in no time. It's also a really good way to start playing some of your own lead music. Record some chords that you know. Okay, we've just done E minor, A minor, C major. They are all chords in the key of C. So we could just record ourselves on our phone if you want to, just playing around those three chords or you could throw a G major in there as well and then just start playing some C major scale over the top. All those little filler notes there were from that C major scale shape, but you get the idea. You could just record a chord progression and then experiment with the order of that scale that we've just worked on. A bit more on recording later on. You're learning chords, you know scale shapes, you want to learn songs, you want to play along to some of your favourite pieces of music. You hear those hits, the classic to the modern day, and when you hear that final finished product presented to you on Spotify, on the radio, whatever, it can sound like a masterpiece, and you'd assume that there's so many intricate little bits going on, but a lot of the time, the backbone, the root of it all, are a few simple chords. Let It Be by The Beatles, a melody and a song that I'm sure most people know. It's just a few chords. <laughs> Jump forward a few years and we throw in a band like Foo Fighters. It 
doesn't always have to be about the chords either. Sometimes it can just be those hugely iconic guitar riffs. Just a few notes. <laughs> So next time you're thinking about one of your favorite pieces of music or you hear a tune you fall in love with, check what the guitarist is playing because you might surprise yourself and realize that you can play it as well. Next up, I would recommend you record yourself. Do this from as early on in your playing as possible. I'm a huge advocate of this process. I do believe it's one of the best ways to reference your development, especially if you're self-taught, you spend a lot of time playing on your own, you might not attend many lessons and have a tutor, you might be following YouTube tutorials. How else are you really gonna hear that finer detail of how your playing is sounding and progressing. If you can do video and audio, that's great. Obviously, nowadays having a phone in your pocket makes that kind of thing very easy. If not, just being able to record the audio and hearing yourself back is a brilliant way to really help your playing kick on. It also opens the door to building confidence about writing your own music. We spoke earlier a little bit about recording. We talked about some chord progressions in the key of C. We know that if we lay down something like a C major, E minor, A minor, and then we take that C major scale and we start playing that over the top, you've recorded yourself playing that chord progression, you've added some single strums. If you've got a little bit more confident or you've wanted to push the dynamic, you've started playing with strumming patterns. You can hear that back, you start playing that C major scale over the top. Once you're comfortable there, stick the capo on the first fret or the third fret and then just move that scale shape up however many frets you've moved. You've moved up to the third fret with a capo, we just move our C major scale shape from the third, so one, two, three, up to the sixth. We are now in D sharp major. You play those same chord shapes that you was doing in the open position, C major, E minor, A minor, and your scale shape starting on the sixth. This is also a good opportunity to talk about a metronome. That is another way to really help your overall playing ability and obviously in particular, your timing. Metronomes, you can get a free app called Metro Timer. That's a great one to have. Or you can get a hard standing mechanical metronome or a digital one. I recommend getting hold of that free app. That metronome, we could set it to something reasonably friendly like 70 BPM, play on the first beat, leave three beats in between and then change to another chord. We are really starting to develop our timing and our awareness. Try practicing your scales. So many possibilities to really improve your ability. Lastly, learn what you love. I can't stress this enough. A lot of time in early lessons, people will be shown something like happy birthday or twinkle, twinkle, little star. I understand the principle of this, the familiarity that those riffs and those melodies hold. But so often I feel like you can find something in the songs that you love that you'll be able to take away and practice really early on in your instrument learning journey. Find a song that you love. If the chords are too complicated, you might be able to suck out a couple of those notes like we did early on with those open chords. You might be able to just play the root notes for now so you're following the bass. There might be a really definitive, amazing melody that the keyboard's playing or the singer is singing that you'll be able to transpose to the guitar. So there's something that you are playing along to a song that you absolutely adore. And that really helps you want to continue your learning journey and your musical development. Now, if you wanna learn some exercises that will really help take your guitar playing to the next level, then check this video. Start implementing these techniques regularly and you will see a huge difference in your playing. Big thank you for watching. I hope to catch you again soon. Take care.